A few weeks ago, I embarked on a surf trip with my best friends to a remote island chain somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And along the way, I've been making films about my journey. The places I've seen, the waves I've scored, and all those moments in between. And now, a few weeks later, I find myself getting on yet another plane and continuing that chase for an endless summer. On this episode, Mia's come to join the fun, and we discover one of Europe's most legendary surf towns. But before we get to that, this story kicks off in the heart of one of the world's oldest cities, nestled in mainland Portugal. For this leg of the trip, the crew and I were excited to have a change of pace after surfing our hearts out in the Azores. Our goal now was to really get out of our comfort zone and experience life beyond the sea. And Lisbon proved to hold the key to exactly what we were after. We spent some time exploring this beautiful city alongside one of our newfound Portuguese friends known as Arendi. We actually met him back in the Azores at a surf break, and when we told him we were planning to visit Lisbon next, he said he lived there. And he mentioned he wanted to be our tour guide and show us the ropes when we touched down. So we took him up on the offer. The city was unbelievable, and I can say with confidence that it was one of my favorites I've ever been to. Now granted, I don't spend much time in concrete jungles, but this one had me feeling like I was in a European fairy tale. For me, it was exactly like I envisioned Europe to be. Tight streets, statues, castles, and little trolleys that all complemented its overall elegance. We spent the entire day, from sunup to sundown, exploring every viewpoint, nook, and cranny. And it was all thanks to Arendi, who proved to be one of the raddest, most outgoing guys that I've met in a while. And he was really a perfect representative for what the Portuguese people have been to me. Warm and welcoming. Beyond that, he was a reminder of why traveling's so special. It's never just about the places you see, but the unforgettable friends that you make along the way. So yeah, the city was epic, but in all honesty, I can only stare at so many statues and buildings before my body craves at least some sort of adrenaline rush. But living in the city has proved to make even that quite the ordeal. Oh, the lovely sound of a jackhammer. Dude. It seems like it should be illegal that they can do this all fucking day and night. Dude, I'm so over the jackhammer, dude. <laughs> you guys, this is the top of our apartment uh, in our new destination here in Lisbon. We're about to go score a surf segment, hopefully, because the good news is that flag, I don't think you can see it on a GoPro because it's, uh, it's a wide angle on a GoPro and it's hard to see, but there's a flag way over there. And it's blowing offshore, I think. I think when the flag blows that way, it means it's offshore. Sun's setting, we've been working all day, and uh, yeah, we're hoping for the best. Chuck, getting the drifties on. Yeah, did you just get some nudity in there or no? Oh, uh, I don't think That's I got any exclusive action. exclusive content. You, you can, you you can rewind it and slow it down, see if we got any action. That shit normally costs 15 bucks a month. <laughs> yep, OnlyFans, baby, no. Guys, if I started an OnlyFans, would someone here buy? If I get one, we're going. Am I just starting OnlyFans and no one buys it? <laughs> that'd be, that'd be awful. <laughs> no one buys it. Like, I'll pay you not to see that shit. Oh God, look at Caden. He's uh, rigging up his new fins here. Dude, huh? I already cracked them. What? I put them in wrong and I already got a little crack on my brand new fins. Oh am twos, more like am poos. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an absolute. Uh, nightmare trying to get six people to go to the beach. Caden's putting his fins, Charlie's promoting his OnlyFans, it's soon to come. Who knows what Will's doing. 
probably in the bathroom for the third hour of the day. I'll update you when we're out of the house. We got a lot to do. And when we get out of the house, you're gonna see how much of a nightmare it is to get to our car. See you in a sec. Right, years later, we finally are making our way here. Look at this. We have to walk out into this lobby. This is how we go surfing every day. The elevator is the best part. Get yes. in there, Caden, get in there. It fits about three people at most with surfboards. It seems like Jackson and I always go together and it's kind of this like weird they go and then it's like this weird awkward. I feel like there's some sexual tension when we're in the oh, elevator. Oh, bye guys. You feel that way? No. Don't get your leash you start, caught in the elevator You door. start with a minus five, then the door closes and you go down. Now we on floor negative five. Now, you come out of one elevator, walk into a parking garage. The yellow brick road leads you to elevator number two. Wow, this has to come up seven stories. And we got a cram and a micro elevator for the second time of the day. Negative five, negative seven. Now you gotta push door number seven open, wiggle through, and the last door of the entire maze. Boom. And you have neighbors that have to do that maze every single day, all day. After spending a good amount of our week sightseeing and being city boys, the drive from our apartment to the surf spot was a breath of fresh air for us all. And it was pretty funny to watch everybody come back to life as we escaped the busy streets and ventured further into the smaller coastal town. The winding roads through the arid cliffs alongside a rugged coast gave me memories of Big Sur, California. In fact, from what I've seen of Portugal thus far, it kind of all reminded me a bit of California. But of course, with its own fair share of European flavor and seemingly much more of an action sports influence on the country. Our first stop was this little town called Aracier, a place that I'd heard small talk of, but I never really realized its importance until I dove into European surf culture. Locals dubbed it the Two Mile Miracle and claimed that this is Europe's North Shore equivalent. Upon arrival, you could just see that the coast was set up for world-class waves. The waves are amazing. There's tons of people. This looks so fun. On this day, the ocean was clean, but the swell was small. And after a little searching, we ended up finding this wave that was a rolling left-hander with a perfect mini barrel. The ultimate for me and my crew's intermediate ability. However, it was to no surprise that this wave was pretty crowded with a crew of locals that ripped hard, and they held down all the good sets, leaving us kooks to just pick off the scraps. Either way, the wave was good fun, and it reminded me a lot of Velziland but gone left. Another day, we ended up taking out our moto winch to a little nearby beach break. I was pretty damn juiced when we finally got our setup going properly, because it worked flawlessly and it reminded me a lot of like hot lapping a ski jump into a fresh field of powder and just letting your body fly free as a bird. Now, although I'd be lying if I said it wasn't our days spent playing in the ocean that fired me up the most, I had to keep reminding myself that waves were really only a sliver to a proper European experience. Which is why I'd like to continue this story at a real moment when the crew and I decided to go grab a bite inside town for a proper European dining experience. We're going to dinner right now, trying to find a spot to eat, hold gangs with me. Sickos, Mia. It's gonna be fun. We're walking into downtown Cascais. If you guys watched last week's video, you know how beautiful and amazing this place is. It's awesome. Middle of Europe, and it feels like it here, so. We're gonna go find something good to eat, celebrate a little bit, have a good dinner on the town. I don't know what we're in the mood for, but uh, we're gonna find something. What do we wanna eat? Italian, Portuguese. What is Portuguese? Uh, like fish cakes, they're fucking gnarly. You know what Portuguese no. is? Pork ham and cheese. No, it's not, no, it's not. It's rice and fish and vegetables on a plate. No, Portuguese it is. Did I tell you the ham and cheese story? No. Did I tell you that? No, what is it? We're in Azores, and we're like, me and Caden were just complaining. We're like, dude, all they have to eat here are ham and cheese. So we walk into this restaurant and we're like starving. We're like, what do you guys have to eat? He's like, uh, we have ham and cheese, just the ham, <laughs> and you just told the me cheese, that. Just, just, just the bread, and no like, tomatoes. <laughs> so you only have ham and cheese. He's like, well, yeah. <laughs> McDonald's has never been good. No, it is good. It is good. It was pretty good. It's not good. It's good. It's really good. Burger King is good. No, that 
fucking <laughs> bullshit. Are you serious? Fuck you, man. Fucking <laughs> bullshit. Are you kidding me? McDonald's is amazing. That McDonald's wasn't good that one him? night. Are you Team Burger King too? Burger King ice cream, yeah. Well, no. Are you like a McDonald's burger or a Burger King burger? Uh, okay. I, okay. I, I okay. Sure, we're walking down the street in this European country going, What's better, McDonald's or Burger King? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we forget how American we just are. But I actually want to know. Team Burger King or Team McDonald's? I think Burger King. I like Burger King. But you already know my stance. I'm Burger King. When was the last time you were McDonald's. 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 That's a four to two. Yeah. Have you ever had, when was the last time you had a Burger I've King burger? Had burger? You're getting what the fuck, dude? Still trying to figure out where to eat. Oh, this is where me and Mia got food the other day. It was good. A check on a Mia. Hey, call the trick, call the trick, call the trick. Oh, 360. No, on the rail, switch lips. 7900. Dude, you know the tricks are the thing. 6060. Okay, dude. <laughs> Look at this. We just ordered this little pizza bread. Looks pretty good. Me and Mia are splitting this thing. It's like the pre appetizer to dinner tonight. Rip it, rip it, rip it. No. Madge, what are you doing? Did you grab that side. You're mutilating. Do you have hot sauce or like peppers? I just talked in my mouth. <laughs> Good. Wow. That looks really good. Oh, shit. Oh, mozzarella. Is that mozzarella? Do I try it? Oh, yeah. Take a bigger bite than I eat. That's the type of shit I feel like you can't get in the States. Yeah. We've made it to dinner. Time to properly order something. Uh, I think we're at a pretty proper restaurant. Ever since we've been here, it's been pretty funny. I'm in Portugal, I've only eaten like sushi, Italian food, weird foods, except for that damn fish cake. I hated that thing. That was the local dish. Yours looks pretty good. Mine looks pretty good. Good, good. Yeah. I think we all kind of fucked up. Can I try yours? <laughs> oh my god, dude, no way. Where the fuck is mine, dude? That's all of it. That's like Look at everything, dude. Look at I was just hoping it, it went. That worked so well. I've never seen that actually work, dude. <laughs> He's not gonna find out until next Friday, dude. Damn. Check it out, guys. We gotta compliment our mighty dinner. It actually wasn't all that mighty. It was pretty good, but nothing crazy. But we gotta compliment it with some gelato. Mandatory. That's the first thing about Mikey. What are you gonna get? Oreo. Oreo? That's for facing. It looks like Nutella. Can I do Oreo? Wow, thank you so much. She's getting guava mango. I got Nutella and Oreo. Looks pretty good. Fucking insane, dude. It tastes exactly like Nutella, Trump. Can I try your mango? Oh, that one's amazing. What did you get? Oh my god. Yeah, it's like a red fruit. Fuck, oh, it's ridiculous. Really? Dude, the mango one's so good. Okay, we're gonna grind these uh, ice creams, then pick this up in a bit. At 23 years old, I can't help but feel filled with gratitude as I'm surrounded by my girlfriend and my best friends just experiencing what it's like to live in Europe. And as many of you know, not long ago, this was my ultimate dream. Traveling the world with camera in hand was my end goal, but I'm already here just a few years One later. Three, Leo Bernardi going down right One of my main motivations to becoming a filmmaker was never for the money, but for the passion and the life experiences that came with it. But now, with the Azores and many other trips in the past, Portugal in the present, and the exciting unknown adventures in the coming weeks, I feel very grateful to call this my reality. And my goal is to never flaunt this life that I'm living, but to instead hopefully inspire some of you. Because not long ago, I was just a kid with a camera and a vision. So I encourage you. I encourage you to book that plane ticket. Quit that job that you hate. Or go get that girl that you've always dreamed of. Because if there's one thing that I can give any advice on, it's that if you never try, you'll never know. Teachers are the boys, and pigs still are pigs, but the good guys are the favorites.